Welcome back to the Rev and Evan channel. I'm Rev and Evan. We're here in West Palm Beach at Barrett Jackson Car Auction. You know this guy, Jim Owens, brand manager, Ford Motor Company on the Ford Mustang. One of my good friends, Jim, great to see you out here. I know you had a tough time getting here. Tough time getting here, but where better to spend April than in West Palm Beach in the greatest car collection auction that they do down here. At early since the early 2000s, we've been coming down here. Yep. Almost as long as I've known you. We, we've done three generations of Mustangs together. This is true. Gen 5, Gen 6, and now Gen 7, and we can't wait to get you behind the wheel of one of these things. Maybe at Charlotte and the Roval and see how this thing handles because I know you've evolved from just drag strip racing to go left <laughs> and right. Yep. This car you're going to absolutely love. Cool. Well, I got questions. Abe's on camera today. He's got his nephew, Logan, here, 13 years old. We got him in the, in the Mach 1 to do the little drive, ride and drive. He uh, came out of that thing with a smile. We've walked around. We've seen Boss 302's old school. We've seen Fox bodies. We've seen some cool cars here that'll be going across the block the next couple days. But I finally got you locked down. We're going to talk about the dark horse behind me. Now, you know I own a GT350, which I Absolutely. love very much. This thing, 500 horsepower, it's an evolution. Am I selling my car and buying one of these? So, I mean, I don't mean to refer back to Carol, right? But I will. Right. You always keep the car as long as you're going to drive it. And right. I think there is room for both in your stable. Once in a while, you're going to get 350 right. is that Shelby GT 350 that you have, that flat plane crank. That is unique, and it would be a unique vehicle going forward. It's like asking which is your favorite child. I might have one like in the vehicle realm, but not amongst my kids. But no, what this thing will do, naturally aspirated with a natural and a normal crankshaft in it instead of that flat plane crank, this is the pinnacle of five liter naturally aspirated we have ever done. And I think it would find a nice home in your garage side by side with that 350. You know, I loved the Boss 302. 444 horsepower, forged internals, that beautiful tunnel ramp Runners style in intake. a box. Yep. Oh, intake. man. Oh. Right? And then the GT350 at 526, which I got my hands on. This is 500, but you got those two throttle bodies. You got the cross-plane crank. Yep. And I got to think there's some room for growth there once the aftermarket gets a hold of, of this engine. You know, Dev and Terzis and Ford Racing and the Ford Performance Parts on the racing side. I'm sure have lots of fun things coming out oh, in the yeah. future for this that will, you know, make your throttle rumble, <laughs> I guess is the best way to put it. So just like we did in Tulsa in the heart of COVID, remember yeah. that was one of the first events we did once COVID hit was unveiling yep. the Mach 1 down in Tulsa, Oklahoma, live and in person. Fun trip. Fun trip. You were down there with us and I walked you through that Mach 1. Yep. What I'd love to do now is walk you through the dark horse our first new nameplate performance derivative since that bullet in 21 years. Which I personally am happy about because 20 years from now, people should look back and not have a 40 or 50 year old retro name. They should have something they can cling on to, in my opinion. So I'm glad that you guys didn't just call it a Boss or a Mach 1 or, you know, I love the name Cobra Jet. I wish you built a street Cobra Jet. <laughs> um, but I'm glad it has its own identity. So let's take a look at the front. Let's take a look at it. So when we did, and Chris, who was doing leading the exterior design, right, it had to be unmistakably Mustang, but built on the foundation of the six generations previous, right? Unmistakably Mustang, but then looking forward to carry it forward. Nope. Right now, I'm as old as the Mustang is, right <laughs> now, and I am in desperate need of a full frame off, rotisserie restoration, maybe some new ligaments and stuff like that. But right. we want that to evolve to the next generation of car enthusiasts just like you and I. And so what we wanted to do is bring that a little bit forward. And you see that in that slope of that hood. Right. Now, also aerodynamics, right? right? When we are designing this, this was the lowest coefficient of drag Mustang we have done. But what we did with it is to kind of make it that aggressive looking, forward looking, that slope along with the Mustang eyes. 
right? Yep. If you think of the Pony Tri Bar, the three ones that go across, you know, from the Tri Bar logo and the back lamps, you know, you still have the three now in there with the LED, which allowed the nose to go down a little bit on all of the Mustang, but specifically on this dark horse as well. Right, and and I would imagine that when you're going to design a very high level of track capability into the car, that cooling is just massive because you can't have somebody go out on the track run three or four laps and start to see those temperature gauges going up, or in this case, on the digital dash, the number's <laughs> climbing. So what you're looking for, and, and you've heard me talk about this on the GT500, like in the 350 when we did the track tours. Right. You know, three points of a triangle. Coefficient of drag, downforce, and that cooling that you still have to have, right. right? Because cooling, when you open up those air things, take away from the air and the ability to go around, right? right. So what they did is they opened up the front here to ensure that as this vehicle comes out of the dealership, you could take it to a track day or other type of track events, right? right. From drifting, from quarter mile, although it's not a quarter mile specialist car, but you're going to have fun with this in a quarter say, mile. With, with, the, with the 10 speed and 500 horsepower, that's going to be 1170. And a drag strip mode. Um, you, will, oh, okay. you will be impressed with it. I mean, the way it kind of sits down on the Magna Ride when you're coming out of the out of the whole shop. But oh, you're this, is, me in my this, is, this is the pinnacle of five liter performance. Right. And it started with the design. Um, unmistakably Mustang laying on the foundation of the six generations before it and looking forward to drag that younger audience into the Mustang love and culture. Right, now, so is that part of the going with a name like Dark Horse? So Dark Horse was the horse you didn't see coming. Right? I mean, it was, right. it, that's the yeah. definition of it, right? And what we were doing here, and a lot of us, you know, we have those names that come out of the, you know, the Boss 302s, the 351s, the Boss 9s, the yep. Shelby's, you know, the Mach 1s, the Bullets, those historical names that you have out there. It was time to say, coming forward, the horse you didn't see coming. And by coming forward, if you can look over here on the quarter, on the, on the front fender, that is the first forward-facing pony head we've put on the car. Yep. Think about it. Like the snakes, the Tiffany snake, yeah, yeah it was kind of forward-looking over there. But we have not had a pony. It's not a running horse. It's not a running horse. It is that forward-looking, nostrils flaring, right? Why did the nostrils flare on a horse, right? It's trying to bring in air as it's trying to run. Same type on this Mustang, right? Twin it's throttle bringing bodies. the twin throttle bodies, exactly. Um, so that twin <laughs> throttle bodies, when it comes in, that gives airflow, that helps us generate more efficiency in there. And you know, I'm not the engineering guy, I'm the marketing guy, right? But it, you know, air in, easier, flowing, allows you to develop more of that horsepower. Right. right, you know, when you go through that in there, and that's kind of what we love. You know, the and the designer spent a ton of time on this with how the angles looked and the nostrils, right. and that is because that free breathing, naturally aspirated engine that Makes has sense. the snouts to be able to give you that 500 horsepower, 100 horsepower per liter right. in a naturally aspirated car. Now I know I passed by going up here to the to the that's all right to the front fenders, but when you come up on the front, now this is the appearance package. Right, so this is the blue ember color, unique. It's not Mystachrome, right? It's not Mystic, where's Matt? <laughs> it's not Mystachrome, it's not Mystic. That light changes that color, that almost bronze hue in it, and it can look different. If you're shooting from where he is right now, and then you shoot differently, it looks like a completely different color. Right. Which we really like off of it. Now, the stripes on here, which, when we do the painted stripes on the appearance package, you can see how the hood kind of bows up a little bit. When we went through the wind tunnel and you do the steam or smoke that we do through the wind tunnel, I think you came up with us when we did one of the wind tunnel yep. events, right? Where you blow the air over it, that kind of the depth of these stripes kind of patterns how the air goes across it. Oh, that's kind of Which cool. is pretty cool. Like, it's tying the appearance into that performance aspect of it. Right, and then function functional, air. Functional air extractor, right? If you're having air come in and you don't want it to lift, you need places for it to go, right? Absolutely. I mean, and then and also temperature as well that comes in through there. Is the splitter bigger than yeah, we've seen? Um, yeah, and then this, uh, this is the appearance package without the handling package. Right, the handling package has a little bit more proud splitter. And this okay. is one of our pre-production cars. It's not the final one that you're gonna see in dealerships um, that we're still saying early summer that will be in there. But that was one of the cool things in here. And then obviously the color of the pony and the unique grill and the unique upper and lower. 
Talk to me about this fantastic looking wheel and the tire package. So the wheel and tire packages, which is unique. And if you see the, the six piston Brembo on the front there, if you notice that color, Huge. that is exclusive to the appearance package there, right? And then you see on there the, the Brembo coloring. And then on the final versions and on like the Mustang GTs um, and the handling packages and the 19 inch brake calipers that we have, there's actually a pony running on the brake now. Oh, which wow. we think is cool, right? You know, That's Brembo's cool. a great partner to work with, and, you know, they are phenomenal in getting, you know, when you have 500 horsepower, getting it to stop. But the, having the, the pony on there is pretty cool. But the same type of brake setup from your GT350, right? The hop-on right. spoke that you get, so you can get that expansion. Right. But unbelievable stopping power. Um, when you're going to be out there on the track, it, th this will be akin to what you're doing on your 350. Okay. Out of you know, the normal Mustang, right? This isn't a Ford Performance derivative. This is just like Boss 302 or just like Mach 1, yep. just like Bullet. The base Mustang team, right? Eddie Kahn, Terzis, you know, Del Zio, that crew oh, from Vehicle Engineering, those right? Guys, yep. Those are the guys who put this in here on that base vehicle. And the, the stopping power is absolutely exceptional. Jim, one of the things that I admire about you guys as the Blue Oval is you're not afraid to bring in great partners. So. I've been at the events, and there's always a representative from Brembo. There's Tremec. Nicole Tremec, Nicole or somebody from Recaro, Recaro right? and they're all a part of, of getting this, this car from ground level yep. to production level. How, how much do you lean on those people for, to put it on them to get it right? Yeah, no, they work, um, and I think, we, like I said, you've been to the track tours that we do, right? When we bring those folks in. Um, the Tremec people on the, have seats in the offices. Wow. Right, so like they're they're in there working to develop it with our engineering team and our dynamics team, and you know think of like Tom Barnes who's retired, sure. right? Um, Eddie Kahn took over after Adnan Eddie um, took after after Tom left. Those folks know about the vehicle, right? And then we bring in those partners who know their specialty and performance to make it unlike the stuff they buy off the shelves from Brembo, right? to fit in exactly to what this car needs, and that's how we've done it. On the seventh generation, these are gonna be the P0s. Um, they're oh, gonna be the Pirellis, yeah. but for this, actually, we did take the Pirelli P0 tires on it. And again, they worked with us just like it's a Michelin great did. It, well, I mean, they, they, they did a good job on this tire, and that's not saying anything bad about Michelin, right? No. It's just that this is what this is what is coming on through the, the Dark Horse lineup and the performance pack. Uh, lineups that we have, so right. that when you take when you take the handling package on there, you will go upgrade into the into the P zeros, which is just again to your point, having partners who know their stuff, and then our engineering team who knows their stuff, and combining it to make it something that you can't pull off the shelf. Right? No, well, it's, and and I, in building a car, like whether you're building a hot rod or whether you're building a production level performance car, or even a regular road car. The, the tire is your only connection to the road. Yeah. So it's got to fit the weight of the vehicle, the horsepower of the vehicle, the, the loading in the corner, the wheel yep. type. There's so much that goes on when picking a tire. Yeah. And, and I think you guys have done a great job. And I see, obviously, Pirellis, but even with Michelin, like yeah. on my car, um, the tires just do a fantastic job. Yeah, and, and they're designed... What is on this as original equipment isn't just the stuff that's off the shelf. Well, right. and that's like what I was getting at in that it's really designed for this application. They're not just looking at their catalog going, all right, yeah, I think this will work. It's, hey, let's get there. Let's go to the track. Let's try stuff, whether it's road noise or tire life. Yeah. It, it, all, it all matters. Let's go down the rest let's of it. Let's go car. down the rest of it. Now, that, that belt line being lower, you can definitely see that in there. That haunch that comes up, and you know how, like, like that, that Mustang has to be that car that's haunched and going forward, right? It's right. the one that actually, like, it's in that rugby stance, that four point stance, and is leaning forward and powerful. And that kind of shows that when you sit from the back of it, um, you, can, you can definitely see that um, with the, the width on there. Then when it comes down to the sloping, you know, you can see a 67, 68 version of yep. that slope that comes down there, which I think they did a really good job getting in there. And of course, the rear wing. Um, now, this is the performance pack rear wing and the handling package rear wing, right? It has the gurney flap on it yep. that increases the downforce, but for street driving, you know, customer can take that off, right? They have the little pieces on there. But the wing here, different from the base one, has the angled section there that this clips into to help on the downforce as you're going through a track. Yeah, I like the way the end plate looks, and if you look at it from, uh, from the back over here, 
it does kind of carry the body line and yeah. flow up. Yep, along with being functional, right? They want to make sure that this is generating, this isn't just appearance, right? This needs to generate the downforce that you need as you and I are running down the straightaway right. of Hallett to go into turn one before you go down there. You want that downforce down there pushing you down. Now, taken to the back of the car here, the color change is really, really noticeable versus standing yeah. on, uh, at the front of the car. And different light, in the, like indoor light, outdoor light, and then cloudy versus sunny. It's amazing how that paint changes. Um, then you can see, obviously, the quad black exhaust tips. That's about the size of the Mach 1 and about the size, just a little bit smaller than the GT500 on the quad active, active valve exhaust tips. Right. Um, something fun on the automatic transmissions, because you can't do it on a manual, right. you have remote rev. Oh, that's great. Right, so you can actually use your key fob, and there's a pattern that you push on the buttons that will start it and take it through a rev cycle when you're outside. So if you're out at Cars and Coffee or in the parking lot at the drag strip there, right. and you want it, it's one thing to start it, it's another thing to take it through, it's revving. Obviously, you can't do that in a manual transmission car with the, 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 the clutch and switch that you have to it's have kinda on It's kind of like there. musical exhaust. It, it, well, yeah, and Mustangs, you know that. Like, the sound that comes out of that exhaust pipe is music, right? Absolutely. We tune it to sound unique because a Mustang GT will not sound like this dark horse. No. Just like the Gen 5 one, where we literally put it into a sound studio and had Mr. Ford actually listen to it to kind of tune the exhaust on there. It is a unique, unique musical note that we're really proud of, and these quad active valve exhaust allows you to do a lot. So you have your quiet neighbor mode, right? right. So just in case somebody wants to yell at you because you leave at <laughs> 5 in the morning, but then you can go all the way to the sport and the track mode where it opens it up full. Track use only, please. That's what we say on the dashboard right. um, for it. But then that can change the, the pitch and tenor to your how you're feeling that day. So, Jim, when I first saw this thing at the uh, the long, long lead in Detroit, yeah. all smiles, everybody's loving it. Now that you've started to get some feedback from, from potential buyers, customers on the 24, talk to me about the feedback you've gotten from the styling, because it's certainly a big change. This might be the biggest change on the whole car. In the rear. And if you think of like when we changed 9 to 10, right? When we were, do you remember how we changed the oh, 9 yeah. to 10 back end, right? Um, you know, everybody has, like I said, it has to be unmistakably Mustang, right? So what did we keep? Obviously, the tri-bar style. Now, sure. concave versus convex, right? right. Mustang Mach-E has the convex version of it, right? right? If you think about it. So it had to be a little bit unique. It looks wider and squattier coming from the back, which is that power piece that we're looking for, right? right? If you see an offensive lineman in that stance <laughs> where that power is coming from, just like where the power from this comes from, is those rear tires and rear wheels that are bringing it up. So it is one of those things that is unmistakably Mustang. You know it's a Mustang when you, when you come up behind it, but then actually it, it shows some of that aerodynamic pieces behind it, including what we like on this one, which is the, you know, remember the old faux gas caps and the real oh, gas yeah. caps we did? Now we have the Dark Horse logo right here in the back facing it. Well, there's been big changes in the past. If you think about, I love the, the tail section on the 69 Mustang in this area, especially because I love that concave look. Yep. I don't like the 70 as much. It's very flat Flatter. across the yep. back. I just tend to like the 69 the way it looks. So it's not like you haven't made changes like that in the past. No, and, and, and that's what the things between generations, right? We can't keep making the same one. We have six different distinct generations before this. Here's the seventh, and this is one of those key aesthetic designs. And Chris, who'd worked on Mustangs before, right. uh, Gen 6 and Gen 7, and the development of it, wanted to give it that more athletic look. And it definitely does from the rear. Yeah, and actually, I'm standing at the left rear quarter panel back here on your camera angle. And if you look at the way the glass comes Slopes. down, the deck lid comes down, it kind of flows into the way the, the rear, rear uh, goes trunk lid flows after, that, after this line here. It kind of flows yep. and then just kind of follows it down. Yeah. But for right. me, just as a Mustang fan, and you know me, I'm pretty much geeky into this, right? That, that you, it unmistakably Mustang, but uniquely different to fit the function that we're looking for from it. In this case, being the pinnacle right. of five liter performance we've ever done. And anytime there's a big styling change, it always takes a little time to grow on people. They have their instant reactions, knee jerk reactions, whatever you want to call it. But then it starts to grow on you. You drive it, you feel the power, you realize 
the areas where it's improved over the previous model, and then you fall in love. Yep, and part of it is, like I told you in the beginning of this, is getting younger, right? We right. need to bring in those people in that sports car segment, right? We still have an internal combustion engine Mustang. We're launching a seventh yep. generation of that. You know, some of our competitors are not choosing to do so, and that's good. We already have an electric version of that Mustang if you want it in the Mach-E. Right. Now, we have this in the internal combustion engine. We have to carry that forward through the years, and we want to pull in a younger audience so when you and I finally retire, right. we can go out to those Mustang shows and then see kids participating with the Mustangs. Well, I'm all about young people getting involved in the hobby, whether it's with a Fox body. Yep. You know, a, a young person can't afford a $70,000 car, but a young person should be excited about the latest product. To draw them into it, to bring up your Fox body, maybe an old SVO, yep. you know, something along that lines that they can play and have fun with. But the thing that we spent the most time on from a, a focus audience, right, through mm -hmm. the younger to bring in those people, is that interior that we did with the Unreal Gaming technology in those two screens. Right. And I cannot wait to show it with you. I told you before we started this interview, Mike Levine and I, when we went down into the studio, we literally sat in this car. It was a convertible. Right for 50 minutes before we turned on the car. That's now, crazy. you know, for me, for one of the first thing I did I when I was the here, engine. I started it up, even though we're indoors, not supposed to do that. Like, that's the first thing. When I got in this car to play with this stuff, right. that is, if you think of how people personalize it, younger people personalize their electronics, right? No doubt. They personalize their game cars that they play in. This is done off of the same technology as what like Rocket League has done. Right. That Unreal Gaming technology that now allows them to personalize their performance and their appearance, not with just stripe kits and brake colors and right. wheels and wings, but to actually personalize their technology and performance. And with the six different saved Mustang levels, right. you can not only do it personalized to what you want, but the mood you're in that day. That's crazy. Which is just so much fun. And that's what that's what we're hoping as well. Now, new cockpit, right? You know, it, it, and for those of you that, you know, the eyebrow, double eyebrow's gone. It's centered. The first it's time you see it, it's tough it on me. Is. I'm not going to lie. And I'll tell you, that was long discussions between the design, the program team, the marketing people, all of us, and the people that you know. We spent months I can on imagine. that. Now, when you sit in that car, right. you will feel, we've always said performance close at hand, right? The way we were able to orient that cockpit with that technology, it feels like when I sit in it, I almost feel like I'm twisted into it. Right. It's, you're still straight square on, but that power and performance and that personalization wraps around you like a cockpit, and it is way cool. Well, when I go to a car show, whether it's Cars and Coffee, or you walk around an event like this where you can literally see every type of make, model from European cars, German cars, whatever, um, muscle cars, yep. right? I, we all know what the styling looks like. I like to look in the interiors to be reminded of what real styling is like. You look in an Exel, you look in a DeSoto out there, push button trans, yeah. engine turn, the old ramblers. Do you I remember mean, those buttons oh on the yeah. side? Yeah. So much styling into the detail. And even like in my GT350, right? I love the gauge pods. I like how the eyebrows are in the ground dash. speed around the <laughs> and the center stack. So I like the idea of the adjustable screens, but I work on a laptop every day. Yeah. So I'm tired of looking at screens. So part of me is like, did 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 the engineers or did Ford and all the cars are going that way. The, the new Corvette is like that. Is it kind of shying away from no engineering or no design and just putting a screen up there? No. And 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 really, and and the uh, Craig and uh, Sandovic who did the interior design on this in here. Right. He's worked on three generations of Mustang, owns two of them himself. Right. It has to be engaging, it has to be functional, it has to have the performance attributes, it has to be able to personalize it, 
and the technology of today right. that you can do those things in there where we have the Fox body gauges if you really want them. You said the magic word for Fox body. So we're talking interior. Can we go take a look? Yeah, let's take a look at it. But I wanted to say, yes, we did think about that, but it's about pulling the generations forward. Right. I did focus groups. Like right, right after, it was right after Barrett Jackson during COVID, actually ended right. up getting COVID. <laughs> but they went to the focus groups. I did it remotely. And the younger people who are Mustang fans, right? They have that common thread of enthusiasm through it, regardless of your age, your demographics, sure. that you're into this stuff, right? We had groups of those folks in there. And then we had groups of folks like yours and my age. Well, I know you're younger than I am, but, but, but like of our generation, sure. right? Of our ilk. The younger kids and said, hey, this is so cool. The personalization, like kind of it's about time. Right. And the current consumption customer of Mustang, one of the guys said, I think I could launch a rocket from this thing. And, and, and that allows us to go in there. All of us are using our phones now and we're evolving, but we still have those things. We'll show you the car drifting and then on the description screen say what is happening to your vehicle and why it's That's doing that. Wild. So it's evolving to get those people to personalize it and to enjoy their performance. You know, in a matter where we went from points, plugs, and condensers, and carburetors, and floats, and jets, to the electronic wonders that are over right. there, right? Same thing is happening with that interior, and you're going to find it extremely engaging. Well, let's check it out. So, Evan, like we were talking about the back, that, in, that, that cockpit feeling. If you think of the old double eyebrow piece, right? Your orientation was split. When you sit in here with that connected screen, it's 12.4 inches and 13.2 inches behind one piece of glass that is all connected. Now you feel kind of like you're in the current fighter jet cockpits, right? Which is that ultimate thing of performance if you think about it and right. you, and and you can do things with this that can personalize your performance your appearance and engage you in this with that unreal gaming technology so i'll hit the button without starting it right so that i can since we're indoors they don't like us to start it in here but you can kind of see how the screen kind of welcomes you a little bit Obviously, the B&O, we talk about working with oh, partners, yeah. the sound system, for those of us who, you know, turn up music as opposed to rolling down the windows and opening the exhaust. But you're going to get a chance to see what comes up on here, right? So, you can see I had, <laughs> what did I have it set in? Track mode, right? Well, that's Of course, you. <laughs> right, that's me, right? Where you have the RPM gauge over there on the top, where you can set your shift points in there, where you can set your actually uh, launch control RPMs. You know me, I'd much rather see that. But you can do all sorts of fun things in here. So if you hit the Mustang button, and I mean, we have the normal stuff that's in there, right? Your navigation, your phones, your radio, you know, your, your, your music, your Apple CarPlay, your Android system, all the normal stuff that's on there. But you push the little pony button in there, which I really enjoy doing. And now you get to the fun stuff in here, right? This is powered by Unreal Gaming Technology. And we talked about first cluster themes. Right when we go in there, you can go down and you can do the normal sport track com. Oh, wait, hey, what shows up over there? Your Fox body. And it shows you I love daytime that. version, nighttime version. And for those of us who love the Fox body in there, this is it's just a way to harken back. You couldn't do that with hard parts, right? Nope. What would you be doing? You'd be taking off the dash panel in here, trying to put right. the gauge packs back in there. Um, now we had one on here, column. Right, the little screen that just shows basically nothing. But then you can go to your track version, right, which sets up your RPMs, focuses on the RPMs and your shift points, and then your sport version. Which I kind of like it does the RPMs and the miles per hour in that little wing smile, kind of like angled at the same way the, the rear wing is angled in there. Um, and then your normal cluster on there. But so, okay, that's the normal stuff. You can do your cluster, which is really cool, right? But what other things can you do here? So you can do your auxiliary gauges that you Ooh. put in there. Not on a stack up on top, like, you know, the little functional ones that we used to have on there. Okay, but then you want to go to different ones. Okay, well, battery voltage. Do you want to change that one to the air fuel? Then we can change it to the six pod, where you can change that one to oil pressure and inlet air, that one into engine oil temperature, that one into, oh, axle temperature. You know, what do you want to see? And your accelerometer, right? That, that old accelerometer with the Gs that go in there. Love but it. you can change in there. So these are things that, again, like I said, you can personalize it to the way that you want it. Um, if we go back in here, the uh, we just did auxiliary, the custom modes, right? We have six different profiles that you can set. Remember how you had the My Mode before? Sure. Right? You could just set the My Mode, whether you wanted the comfort setting on this 
on the steering, you wanted the sport settings on your suspension, and you wanted the active exhaust and track mode, right? Track use only. Um, <laughs> then, you know, here you could only set the one, previously in Gen 6 you could set one. Now you can set six different profiles for presetting in there of all of them, which is, I, I think, again, just things that you want to do and personalize your screens. The My Color, which is a lot of fun, right? Both the displays and the ambient lighting. Remember how we came out with My Color in Gen 5? Yep. Remember how hard it was? You had to set it here with your little things and green was three or four and you changed the numbers. Now you just move the touch screen over to change your primary and your secondary. So purple and yellow. And then you can do your ambient lighting, which is the foot wells and around the side there. And you can change your ambient lighting as well. Both the colors. Uh, that's right. too cool. And again, not something that from a Mustang standpoint that you would say, oh, I have to have it. But but you want to have it, right? You want to make it your own. You do with stripes, you do wheels, you paint your calipers different colors. Now you change the gauges in here to the various colors that well, you want. It is about personalization, personalization. connectivity. Yep. And yep. like you, you said before about you know the mood you might be in so you yep. could have uh, can you set up play playlists and really oh, yeah. have colors that go with playlists and i mean that's all it's all the know. stuff that you can do with the unreal gaming technology in there and and i'm sure we're going to continue to advance right. but here is here is my favorite right so this is in the track apps right because every single car that you have has to have line lock in it right or I launch do. control i mean like you know things that you don't put into a car to get you to the kroger Right? These are things that you can do for track use only and fun. But the drift brake that we were talking about, which is you know, helped develop by, you see what I mean? <laughs> right? And then it also tells you, hey, turning a drift brake on changes to track mode, lock the rear wheels when you pull up on the performance brake handling. Like it's telling you and helping teach you, not only does it set up the drift mode in there, right? Now it's gonna say track use only and then it's gonna tell me because I'm indoors, it's disabled, right? So it's I giving you a there. tutorial. It gives you the tutorial on it, but as you see it, it's, and we put up the development video, Vaughn and Chelsea, um, press brake pedal down, push handle down. Um, we're out there developing it with the engineer sitting in the passenger seat, plugged into the laptop, then dialing in the braking based off of this wow. to induce drifting. Um, now what it, about, show me on the, on the screen there when you rotated the car yeah. and you can see the so, suspension and stuff. Yep, if you go in here to, there we go. So when you go into modes, right, you change your suspension, right? And then you can actually spin it around, look it up and down, and then it highlights what you're doing in there. And that is that Unreal Gaming technology, which is so cool. And then if you wanted to change your steering effort, then it comes up with your steering in there, shows you what it's changing while you're in there. Um, your traction control shows wow. you where the... Oh, yeah, look at that. Spin that around. Those are the burnouts that you do, Evan. All right, this is after you rev, then when you get it engaged, and then you start smoking the tires on there. But it, it just allows you to change, you know, and then you can go to the standard ones, right? Okay, and there, you're now you're in track mode. So you're in track and all three across the board. Um, and then you can see the things that are in there. It's just, again, a way to engage in the technology and personalization that makes Mustang special. I'm even noticing some coloration on the seats and the blue stitching is really yeah. nice. Yeah, Carrie Kennerly, who's the interior design color and materials person, she loves this stuff, right? Um, she matched these colors and the way the trim goes and you can see the colors on the stitching right. on the Recaro seats and the color on the outside of the bolsters in here, along with the Dynamica is how right. we pronounce it from a pattern standpoint. And these are the Recaros in there, but it's tied into the base seats as well. But that interior with this carbon fiber style and it's textured. It's not just the flat, you know, like polished surface. You can oh, feel yeah. that in there. And again, it is a way Carrie and the interior design team, she did wonderful work tying it all together. And then on the manual, which I like as well, and you can see the shifting, the, the stitching going up here. On awesome. the manual, anodized titanium blue shift knob oh, on the cool. manual. And it's not shaped like the old cue ball version, like think of Boss 302, like that right. type of version. It is set up to fit your hand for performance. And it's in it, we hollowed out the inside of it so that it can stay cool. So you're not really burning your hand on touch. Think like when you oh, park wow. it out there. It's again, things. And, and, and the design team with Interior with Carrie Kennerly, we literally sat there 
in the studios, looking at the different versions and the different colors and all those things in there to make this interior come to life. Amazing. Jim, thank you so much. Man, took us through the car, gave us a really good look at everything. I cannot wait to drive this thing and to give everybody on the channel a first-hand look at what it's like to put the pedal to the metal. I just can't thank you enough to be able to, you know, talk about this stuff. So you, you can't tell whether I like enjoy this or not. But what I really do enjoy loving doing is sharing it with the Revan with Evan folks who are out there, who are part of your channel. And we are so excited for you guys to actually come out and drive these vehicles and test the new drift brake on the performance pack. Track use only, please. Um, because you're the crowd that really loves this stuff and we love spending time with you.